Hello there, Virgo. So, first of all, um, just bear with me. If you start listening to this, please uh, listen to the end of this uh, video, okay? So, I, I see two organizations. One organization has a very, very charismatic leader. And I feel like um, everybody that is working for that leader sees the vision, sees the passion, and sees, you know, the direction that the leader is trying to move the organization, the company, the institution, the, the business. Everyone is kind of like very inspired by that leader. So they are um, pegging their dreams and their aspirations on this leader. And I feel like because they're doing that, you know, once the leader decides, okay, well, I, I'm not happy here anymore. I'm going to find another group or no, another organization to galvanize, to inspire, and to, you know, do something new. So as soon as that leader steps out of the picture, the the rest of the organization is in disarray because they're, they were pegging their dreams and their vision on that leader. And with the leader out of the picture, they don't know where they stand. They don't know what they're supposed to do. And so there was, I, I feel like there is this disintegration because as soon as that figurehead is, is gone, everyone is just now has, has to, you know, really dig deep within. What do I do now? You know, like no one's inspiring me anymore. So how do I motivate myself? How do I inspire myself? I feel for some of you, you're in a similar environment where I feel like some there there might have been a change in leadership and every everybody is just like what do we do now how do we secure our job position how do we feel inspired again how do we still you know value the same things can we still continue to work here because the vision is no longer there okay and then um, for others there is another organization and I feel like what it is, is um, the figurehead is a very transient position. So that means uh, one person comes in and then, you know, they, they do their stint for like three, five years. And then they leave and somebody comes in. So it feels more like a rotation. But what's really good about this second um, organization is that Everybody has a role. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone is like a cog in a wheel. And there is a purpose for everything. And so everybody is interchangeable. So that can be a good thing or a bad thing. But the point of it is because everything is, you know, structured, rigid, and, and there's a, a place and there's a position for everybody. Everybody serves their function in that specific environment. And if you're missing one person, the cogs won't turn, right? And so it, it's like a well-oiled machine. And the figurehead is only there to conduct, is only there to make sure everything runs efficiently. And so... I feel what's happening is um, if you're in that second stage, I feel like a lot of you would rather be in that second organization where it's like everything is efficient, productive, and there aren't any surprises. It's predictable, yes, but there aren't any surprises. Everyone has a place and everything is in its place and everyone works together in order to, you know, get things moving, get things rolling. And so you would rather be there. You would rather be, you know, working in that type of an environment, even though it's kind of monotonous and tedious and, you know, can be very stagnant and can sometimes be boring as well. And I feel like one of the, the reasons why you are naturally drawn to that environment is because it's predictable and it's organized. But I feel like what position you're meant to be in is you have too many skills and too many, um, I want to say, too much experience under your belt. You're not meant to be a cog in the wheel. You're meant to supervise all of those pieces to make sure the machine is up and running. And so your job in this world and your life path overall is to be that one person, that, that conductor, that conveyor, that person that surveys the environment and make sure that everything is in its place, that everyone is where they're supposed to be, that everyone is working to their optimal, you know, best, so that the environment is highly effective, 
it's highly, highly productive. It's run like a well-oiled machine. You're meant to be a conductor so that you can whip everything into shape and you can, you know, fill in all those inefficiency so that everything runs well. So I bring up these two ideas is because I feel like in the past you were pegging your 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 dreams, your aspirations on somebody else. And I feel for some of you it was mainly, you know, um having expectations from family, from your social environment, wanting to succeed. And I feel like success for you was never just accumulating a lot of money. I feel like you also wanted to have like that emotional satisfaction from the work that you do, you know, either getting very positive reception for the work or a job well done or doing a job where you feel like, yes, I want to make money. But on the other hand, I do want to help other people as well. So I feel like you went into it kind of like, you know, on the sidelines, wanting to make money, wanting to help others as well. And I feel like you're at a point right now where you really want to think about which organization you want to be in. Um, because I feel like for the past few years, a lot of you have come into the first organization where there was, you know, um, that, that really passionate, you know, uh, charismatic leader. But everybody else, they, they lose that vision. They, they come in very, very passionate, very enthusiastic to get a work done. You know, they, they believed in the vision. But over time, I feel like the work itself really dampened their energy, really brought them down on a, uh, on a very deep, you know, vibrational, spiritual, um, dense space. And so they lose their passion for the work. They lose their reason to be. And I feel some of you are like that right now in your current work environment and you're looking further afield, you're looking out there and you're looking for more op opportunities. And so I really want you to think about, you know, in terms of the, the latter organization where things are run very efficiently because you are at the helm. So I feel that for your next move, try to be at the helm. Try to be the person that oversees things because if it's going to be done right, you need to be the one in charge, okay? Um, the other message that I feel coming through is they mention a property that is depreciating in value. So for those of you who are um, thinking about releasing or selling property, um, they mention, you know, uh, depreciating depreciating in value by the March 2018 time frame. So I feel like for some of you, if you're thinking about releasing a property because of, you know, lack of uncertainty, um, I feel that it might be best to do it before then. And then for others of you, if you are trying to purchase a property, it might be best to do it after March 2018 when the property value depreciates so that you can get, you know, like a cheaper house, um, that is a little bit more in your price, um, in your budget or getting like really good terms when it comes to the mortgage. Okay. So that's just a predictive message coming through. Um, I do feel overall, um, there are a little bit of travel restrictions that are coming through for the next two weeks. Be very, very careful when it comes to travel logistics. And, you know, it is Mercury in retrograde, so I'm not surprised to see this, but I feel like for you guys, especially with Mercury being your ruler, just make sure that you have a backup plan, have a contingency plan, you know, just, um, and especially like anticipate all the, you know, anticipate the delay. So that means bring a book, bring your laptop, you know, kill, kill time some other way so that you're not frustrated waiting for things to speed up. Okay. I feel overall in your relationship sector, things are looking very, very good. I feel like um, both parties are chipping in, in order to, you know, really stabilize a relationship. And I do feel you and another person, you're uh, like a, a, either a business partner or somebody that you are romantically linked up with, I feel like you are joining your bank accounts together as well. So I feel like this big pool that two people are drawing from this at a distance. So they could be overseas or they could be out of state, but I feel that's coming through. The last thing that I want to end this with is um, I feel as if some of you, you're in a field where you communicate to make money, where your words 
allow you to make money. So that means you might be in a position where um, a lot of people listen to what you have to say and they, they take your guidance and your expertise to, to heart. So that means you have to be extra careful about how you word things. You have to be extra careful when it comes to using politically correct language, for example, and you have to be extra careful about what you are putting down on paper you know, like if you're writing, for example, what you're putting down on paper, how long those, um, you know, the, the, the written words, the written messages will be around because I feel like there there is possible room for others to scrutinize you. You know, they, they might say like, well, you say this now, but two years ago when you wrote this article, you did this, you said this. So I feel like um, in situations like that, if you are ever confronted with that, you know, where somebody's using your words against you, um, I feel that one thing you can honestly tell them is, you know, times change, people change, and I've changed my stance because, and then you can give them, you know, further evidence. But I do see that element coming in where you're very cautious about what you say mainly because you don't want it to be misconstrued. You don't want it to be taken out of context. And I feel like, you know, it's a, a really good month for you to continue to do that. It's going to feel a little bit stressful, but as long as you maintain that sense of decorum, as long as you maintain that kind of like poker face demeanor and being very, very methodical, strategic about what you're saying, I feel like it's going to be... Um, in your greater interest, okay? So we have Mercury in retrograde, and I want you to be especially careful about not losing your temper, about, you know, being very calm and collected when you communicate. And I also want you to just know the, the energy for the Mercury retrograde starts on August 12th, and it's going to end on September 5th. However, um, the effects of it can be felt two weeks before and two weeks after, so just be very careful, all right? So Virgos, I do wish you the best.